again from Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 to 25 this morning. Just thinking of my troubles and my lonely wanderings make me miserable. That's all I ever think about and I'm depressed. Just thinking of my troubles and my lonely wanderings makes me miserable. That's all I ever think about and I'm depressed. Then I remember. Somebody say remember. Somebody say remember. Somebody say remember. Can you shout it with passion this morning? Somebody say remember. Then I remember something that fills me with hope. Fills me with hope. What do I remember? The Lord's kindness never fails. If he had not been merciful, we would have been destroyed. I don't know if that's your testimony this morning. The Lord can always be trusted to show mercy each morning. Each morning. Deep in my heart, I say, the Lord is all I need. I can depend on him. The Lord is kind to everyone who trusts and obeys him. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to our heart. Speak to our heart. Do what only you can. We receive this morning wisdom, revelation, light, insight. Divine instruction, clarity, but most importantly, be refreshed in your presence. Our commitment to you is renewed. Our passion for you is reunited. By the time you're done with us, we do not remain the same. All the glory goes to your name, and there is liberty in your presence in the name of Jesus. Because what the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I declare in the name of Jesus that the spirit of the Lord begins to saturate for everybody under the sound of my voice, your mind, your soul, and everything connected to you in the name of Jesus. Healing flows this morning. Insight flows this morning. Clarity flows this morning. You see the help of God. You receive the strength of God. An exchange begins to take place. You drop your weakness and take on the strength of God. You drop your frustration and take on the victory of God in the name of Jesus. Because faithful is he was promised. And faithful is he to do it in the name of Jesus. And God's people say, amen. can you say a bigger amen this morning? Amen. So a lot of us can identify with the prophet. You know, saying, ha, ah, the troubles are plenty in fact, when I think about them, I don't know how to put them into words. And the more I think, the more lonely I get, the more overwhelmed I get. I'm so miserable. I don't even know how to explain it. I don't even know I'm going to get out of it. And that's when you begin to deal with depression. When you're overwhelmed, when you feel cornered, when you feel everything around you dark. But then he said something. Then I remember. Somebody say, Remember. I remember something that fills me with hope. When you're filled with the hope from God, there is no space for darkness. Hallelujah. When you're filled with hope, there is no space for depression. When you're filled with the hope of God, there is no space for failure. Hallelujah. There is no space uh, for giving up. There is no space uh, for excuses. Uh, but most importantly, the devil does not want me to be conscious of this. Uh, the devil wants me to think contrary. But the kindness of God never fails. Man might fail. Systems might fail. Governments might fail. Kings can fail. Their rule can stop. But there's a king of kings and the lord of lords. There's a God that rules in the affairs of men. There is a father that is seated in heaven. And the earth is a full straw. And he's always kind to me. He's always good to me. If he had not been for his mercy. In spite of all this. In spite of COVID-19. 
in spite of economic depression, in spite of the loss of my job, if he had not been for God, in spite of my health challenge, in spite of my financial challenge, in spite of the way my company is struggling right now, if he had not been for the Lord, we would have been utterly destroyed. But for God, where would I have been? But for God, what would have become of me? And God is saying, remember, I got you. Remember, I keep watching over you. And every day I craft the mercy that you need for each day. For your children. Hallelujah. For your marriage, for your relationships, for your investments. My mercies are new every morning. Do you want to wave your hand and thank God for his faithfulness this morning? I just need somebody to take a moment. So thank God, great is your faithfulness, great is your faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I sing, all I have needed, I have provided, Hallelujah. great is thy faithfulness. Lord, I didn't plan this this morning, but I believe somebody, you need to raise your voice uh, and raise your heart. God is faithful. God is merciful. And His mercy makes all the difference. Oh, morning by morning, new mercy I see. Oh. But God says, I make sure you get all you need. The devil might want to cheat you. But God says, I keep defending you. Hallelujah. God is faithful. It's all that you need. You can depend on him. And as long as you trust him, as long as you obey him, he's always kind. So we talked about focusing on the right memories. Why? Because things will not turn out right until you start thinking right. Can I take that again? Can you remember? Things will not turn out right until you start thinking right. Because we all tend to see what we are expecting to see. So when the prophet wallowed in mystery, felt lonely, depressed, that was his focus. When he decided to come out of that and remember that God is kind, that God is good, that his mercies are new every morning, what happened? He was able to see that some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. God has given me over the years uh, chariots to make use of, uh, horses to ride on, but that is not where my trust lies. But I trust in the name of the Lord. And the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous what? Run into it and is safe. So I appealed to you that your brain has limited capacity in encoding different memories. Negative, positive. Do you understand? And that because of the way the world is, we have the tendency to keep wallowing in whatever shame you've had to deal with, whatever guilt you have to deal with, whatever pain you have had to deal with, but God is calling you out in this season to begin to encode right and create the right memories, recreate things in me because you begin to birth things in the spirit. And I was able to establish that there are five things, five memories we want to focus on in this season. I've shared three so far and I'm going to be sharing the remaining two this morning morning. Are you with me? So the first one is what? Remember what? Your true identity. You are not your past. Eh? You are not what you have. You are not what people say you are. You are not what the society says you are. You are who God says you are. 
You are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So yes, your father's pedigree may work in your favor. Or not work in your favor. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is your true identity is what? You're a child of God. You are in a new kingdom. Hallelujah. You belong to the kingdom of God. We live in this world, but we are not of this world. So God says, no matter what is happening, no matter the trend around you, remember what? Remember what? And the second one was, remember you have come a long way. You might not be where you want to be or where you desire to be, but you're definitely not where you used to be. Are you where you used to be? No. And don't take for granted your battles. Ha. Ah. Don't take for granted your fights. Don't take for granted your victories. Others may not know how much you have had to invest to come this far. But God says, I'm conscious of it. And I brought you this far. If I brought you this far, I am the one that perfects all things. Hallelujah. He who began the good work in you is what? As faithful to complete it. If I brought you this far, then I'm going to take you all the way. But the beautiful thing about God is what he does in the present. It always surpasses what he has done in the former. The glory of the what? Shall be greater than the former. So you've come a long way. And if you come a long way, this is not the end of the road. The path of just as a shiny light that shines brighter and brighter. So it can only get better and better and better. And all things are working together for you. Can you declare with me this morning, all things are working together for my good. The economy is working together for my good. My relationships working together for my good. All things are working together for my good. In the name of Jesus. And the third one I talked about when we are turning with praise, my favorite so far is God can never forget you. God can never forget you. Let me say it one more time for emphasis. God can never forget you. He sees your struggles, he sees your pains, he sees your weaknesses, he sees your strength, he sees everything and he's working out every detail to ensure that you are well taken care of and i introduced to us elroy the god that sees men might not see you you might not even see yourself but you serve a god that is committed to you he is not only committed to you he has the power do you understand to do all things but that's not the most important thing he said the very air on your head is numbered. You are the apple of my eyes. So you might not be important to some people. But never consider the fact that you're not important to me. God will never forget you. No matter what happens, he will never forget you. And if you remember Noah, he stayed in the ark. Days went by. Months went by. Everybody at the beginning was laughing. And then at one point, even when they were gone, but he stayed in his instruction. He stayed with the God that would never leave him, nor forsake him. The God that goes before you and comes behind you and surrounds you and prepares the way for you and lights your path and leads you. And the Bible says, and God remembered Noah and everyone that was with him. In the ark. Can you say to your neighbor to, with me this morning, stay in the ark. Stay in the ark. Stay with your instruction. Trust God. Obey him. Because he's faithful. He will never forget you. And the more you trust him, 
the more you stay with God, the more God will continually give you encounters that will give you cause to celebrate in the name of Jesus. That will give cause to your generation or yet unborn to celebrate you in the name of Jesus. There are projections that you have made. There are, there are things that you are trying to work out in the name of Jesus. This is the time where there's exponential results. As you focus on your father and your maker and your friend in the name of Jesus. God like never before shows up strong and comes true for you. Remember your true identity. Remember you've come a long way. Remember God can never forget you. And the fourth one this morning, as I quickly run, remember your seed speaks. Remember your seed speaks. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 amplified translation says, while the earth remains, see time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. It shall not cease. I create the seasons, I create the time, I roam the world by principles of circles and seasons and times. So I control the harvest. And remember, he's a merciful God. He's a good God. He can never forget you. If he brought you this far, he's committed to taking you all the way. Are you with me this morning? And your true identity is found in him. The outcomes that you get in your life stems from your identity in God. So if he says, see time and harvest, uh, cold and heat, uh, summer and winter, day and night, uh, shall not cease. Uh, God is saying, pay attention to your seed. What are you planting? And when we begin to talk about seed, we begin to talk about, again, back to memories. What are you thinking? And then what are you saying to the atmosphere? Hallelujah. Out of the abundance of what? The heart. The mouth. Out of the abundance of the mouth what? I talked about the fact that we keep praying. We keep coming together. But a lot of Christians, uh, what is negating the effectiveness of our Christianity these days? As you are stepping out in that compound already, your conversation, the overflowing of your thoughts is not consistent with God's word concerning you. You need to intentionally renew your mind so you think the right thoughts. You encode the word of God right. Think the right thoughts about the people around you. Think about yourself the way God has spoken to you. Are you with me this morning? It's a seed. And it speaks louder in heaven than any other thing. When you're speaking, confess the word of God. Say what God has said concerning any situation. Don't repeat the fact. Amen. Don't go according to your feeling. So the farmer might not feel all good, you know, about, okay, taking out a part of my harvest to be able to sow. But if he does not do that, then there's no room for improvement. There's no room for growth. Are you with me this morning? Just walk with me. So God is saying, a lot of times uh, we are paying attention to the atmosphere, to the surrounding, to the environment. Leave that to me. Sow your seed. What is happening in this season? There's a build up going on. There's a build up going on. There's a build up going up. And the more you are investing, the more you are giving. The Bible says give, and it's we're giving to you. Good, you know, because when we talk about giving, a lot of times our mind just goes to money. And God is saying it's beyond that. Your time, your talent, your love, your gift, there are things that are unique to you that only you can make happen for your network. And those seed, they are speaking important to me and the more you give the more there's a build up and God says just as the snow the rain and the snow goes forth hallelujah and it rains over the earth to be able to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater 
that is how my word will not return to me void. It will go how to accomplish that for which I have sent it. God is saying in 2021, every word that I've spoken concerning you stands. It speaks. It's yes and amen. But the rain is coming on your seed in the name of Jesus. And as the heavens are open over you, your seed begins to speak like never before in the name of Jesus. Your days of discouragement are over. Your days of doubting yourself over. Your days of second guessing yourself over. Your days of thinking some things have gone to waste over. I don't know. It might have been 20 years ago. It might have just been yesterday. You might be looking ahead in the next six months uh, and wondering how am I going to do it uh, but God is challenging you this morning put in that time uh, register for that course uh, give the best to your boss uh, you might not get the accolade uh, you might not get the recognition but I see you and your seed is speaking and when your seed speaks, uh, it is the principle of how I run the earth uh, even when men gang up against you I am the I am I am that I am is speaking the alpha and omega is on your case so it's only in the matter of time, your harvest will definitely come up. Your marriage will definitely show forth the glory of God. Your business will definitely thrive under God. Your testimonies will flow in the name of Jesus. God will raise all that men. So he says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. How many of you have seen those mama when they favor you? You say, ah, mama, let me shake it away. Ah, this thing, you're just pouring it out. Do you understand? God now says, I go out of my way, shaking together. Then I pour more. It begins to run over. It runs over. The next person says, ah, ah, God, why are you giving her this much? A seed is speaking to me. She's special to me. She's important to me. <laughs> praise God. That's a good place to get excited. You can put your hands together and praise God this morning. So don't get tired. Don't waste your time complaining. Let's not become weary in doing good. Let everybody be mad. Oh, sorry. I think I can get Let everybody be mad together in the country that we are in. But please don't join them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let everybody run things anyhow on social media. But your true identity is in who? Let's not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It is principle. It is the word. It is settled. Sow your seed in the morning. At the evening, don't let your hand be idle. Keep giving. But Pastor D, they are not giving me back. It's not the same men that you have given back to, that you are giving to, that will give back to you. Are you with me? It's not the same thing that you sow that I will give you back as harvest. I will go to the... Places that you need me the most and show up. The heart of the king is in my hand. I turn you wherever I will. Sir. Where you think I cannot open doors for you is where you will say, God, is this where you were waiting for me? Seriously? I don't know if you have experienced some things lately and you say, this is not me. Can somebody testify? This is not me. And in case it's not yet your experience, it is happening in your neighborhood. So very soon, if you keep thinking this way, if you keep expecting this, it's going to be your testimony. In fact, it's your testimony already. Your mind and your soul just need to align with your spirit. Your seed speaks. And I don't know about you, but seeds always cost something. If you eat the whole of your harvest... Eh? Is there room for growth and improvement? If there's adjustment that you're supposed to make, you refuse to listen. Is there room for growth? In fact, people that want to adapt, they will just keep their advice to themselves. People that want to give you, they will just give their, keep their giving to themselves. Hallelujah. But God is saying, be willing to step out. Be willing to give your best. Please, let's stop subjecting ourselves to the king syndrome. What is the Cain syndrome? Because if you look at it truly, before God spoke to Cain, Cain brought out his, uh, he used to plant, he had plants. Do you understand? The Bible says, if you check, a lot of us used to say that uh, Abel brought the best plant. That, in the beginning, that's not how the story started. Cain brought out the crops and sacrificed and gave. Abel, 
Do you understand? Brought out out of his livestock and sacrificed and gave. Somebody will say, seed is seed. Abby, my seed is different from your seed, right? Your seed is different from your seed, right? What it takes to make my marriage work is different from what it takes your marriage to work, right? What it takes for me to thrive in my place of work is different from what it takes for you to thrive. What it takes for you to thrive in Nigeria is different from what it takes for you to thrive in Canada. Witness. Give me witness. Give me witness. Ah, yes. Yes or yes? But you had better know your seed truly. Because a lot of people have entered Canada and they've wondered, ah, is it like this? <laughs> but some people have gotten there and they're like, they knew what they were doing. And some people are in Nigeria. We had the Boas of Nigeria flourishing. So, do you understand? When there was no bread in Bethlehem, Boa stayed back and stayed with his property, stayed with his land, kept on tilling, kept on trusting. God is asking you, are you looking at the environment? Are you looking at the fact? Or you are sowing your seed, you are following your instruction, you are trusting me, and you know in due season, there will be harvest. There will be harvest. So Abel brought out of his flock. And the Bible says, God looked at Abel's sacrifice with favor. And God did not look at Cain's sacrifice with favor. You can open to it, Genesis chapter 4. But I can't because of time. And then Cain started complaining. Why are you looking at another person's seed? Why do you think somebody else's seed is superior to yours? If you feel you're not getting certain results, why not go back and check with God? And align some things. Because the Bible says God showed up to Cain and said, Cain, why are you complaining? If you do right, will you not be acceptable? But you have decided to give yourself in to sin. But if you decide to arise, you will not be subjected to this fall. Instead of him to follow God and know how to adjust his seed and know what to do, he took his complaining syndrome to another level. Do you understand? He, you know, we talk about the Soros, okay? Generation. I'm not saying don't talk. I'm not saying don't ask for your rights. I'm saying sow your seed. Do what God will have you do. Put in the work God has asked you to put in. Because there are people that are busy. And their seed is speaking. And is germinating. And making things happen. Can I get a witness in the house? And is making things happen. And because God didn't respond according to Cain, he didn't respond the way he would have wanted. The next thing was to take the law into his hand and kill Abel. And that was how he truncated whatever harvest could have been. God is saying, I see you. I'm calling you out. I'm instructing you. I'm helping you. Instead of you fighting and pushing blindly, let me help you. Instead of you thinking of the way you can always be right, follow the principle of the word of God. Keep giving. Because in due season, you would reap harvest. And sometimes your seed will cost you big time. It will cost you. Ah, Pastor D, you don't know what my husband is doing to me. Your seed sometimes will cost you big time. Ah, Pastor D, you don't know how overwhelming my workload is right now. God is saying, I'm your help, I'm your shield, and your exceedingly great reward. Stay with me. Your seed is speaking. Nothing is going to waste. Remember, David said in the Bible, I will not give to God what will cost me nothing. At this point, it was not as if his record with God was fantastic. In fact, he had just messed up big time. David forgot that God was indeed his shepherd and where God was bringing him for. That's the way I can see it. And decided to take a census. Count all the fighting men. You know, now he now had victory. He was ruling the whole of Israel. After waiting how many years? After Saul chased him up and down. Now he had victory. He had issues with Bathsheba. The mercies of God are what? New every morning. But there is a way he allowed the success. 
we look at it, but at times we look at it, maybe the success got into his head and it was, he told Joab, count every, I want to know my assets. What do I have? And Joab was like, why would you want to do this in the sight of God? The Bible says the devil decided to stand against Israel. Ah, and when David started counting, in fact, Joab did not finish counting. Joab said one million something, something, I don't know, you know, whatever. He didn't count some tribes. And David felt bad because he knew that he had sinned against God. The difference between David and Cain is acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. The power of the seed. I have the seed in my hand. I can determine what I give per time. Or I can complain. And the Bible says, God said, David, you have messed up big time. Choose three. He gave him three options. Just choose because you are a dead man. And you are, this time around, I'm not punishing only you and your household. I'm punishing the whole of Israel. Guess what David said? I know I've messed up, but I'd rather fall into the hand of God than the hand of man because I know that the mercies of God speaks at every point in time. Give. Think. Do. Say. Serve conscious that the mercy of God makes all the difference. Hallelujah. And where you get limited, the blood of Jesus begins to speak for you. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The seed that Abel had sown kept on speaking by the time Cain killed him. And yet the New Testament says the blood of Jesus does what? It speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So, Pastor D, I'm not sure all I'm doing can accrue or amount to much. God is saying, I finished everything on the cross. My blood, the blood of my son is speaking for you. My mercies is speaking for you. And the Bible says, even though God decided to send the angel out to start killing people and sent a plague to Israel. It was God himself, after 70,000 people died out of over 1 million, that told the angel to stop. I cannot take this again. God is saying, the more I see you, the more my mercy is speaking. You don't know what I've delivered you from. You don't know how much I've delivered you from yourself. You don't know how much I've delivered you from men. But my mercy keeps speaking. You need to be able to see it. David saw that mercy. Cain refused to see that mercy. Are you with me this morning? Do you understand me this morning? Hallelujah. And even though it was going to cost David, David decided, you know what? I'll be in the hand of God. I'll be humble. I can look stupid in front of the people because I know where I'm coming from. I'm so sorry I forgot where God brought me from. I'm so sorry that God helped me. I, I didn't dis- de- realize that God helped me this far. I lost my mind for a moment. But God, I'm back. And God sent word to him and said, sacrifice. And that was when he said, that vineyard that God stopped, I will pay for it full price. But beyond that, all his life, if you look through the end of First Chronicles, David went out of his way to settle God. He went out of his way to make God his priority. He, oh, he outdid himself. It was the next chapter that David gathered all the things that were needed to build the temple. And he said, you know, Solomon, you might not have, do you understand? You don't have the wisdom to do it. He gathered everything. The Bible says he was able to sort out the priest, sort out the Levites, sort out the, the way the house of God runs, sort out the army. Till David's dying breath, he kept on giving to God. How no wonder till today his dynasty is standing, albeit in God. Hallelujah. God is saying to you this morning, your seed speaks. And no matter how much it costs, you will get much more. Let your seed touch God. If your seed touches God, it will change the world around you. Like David, hold your peace and let your seed do the talking. After then, David was done talking. It was a seed that was doing the talking. Cain could have decided to submit to God and give the way God will have him give. And I'm sure the result would have been different. How many of you are going to keep remembering in this season that your seed speaks? 
There is nothing that you do that is lost. There is no sacrifice that you make that is lost. Rather, there is a build up so that there's an abundance in the name of Jesus. And as the heavens open over you, there is increase. Men around you can be saying there's a casting down, but you will keep saying there's a lifting in the name of Jesus. You will keep saying there's a lifting in the name of Jesus because God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. So God is saying you love me. You want to show that you love me. Keep sowing to make the world better. And if you touch me, then your wife will be the better for it. Your husband will be the better for it. Your children will be the better for it. Your organization will be the better for it. Your country will be the better for it. If I sow my seed, if you sow your seed and our seed begins to speak, then the earth will flourish. How many people are going to remember that our seeds are speaking in this season? How many of you are ready to step out this week, sowing your seed like never before, making a change in humanity like never before? Your seed speaks. And finally, this morning, remember, you thrive on your divine connection. And this, I'm just going to run through really fast and round up. So remember your true identity. Remember, you've come a long way. Remember, God can never forget you. Remember, your seed speaks. Remember, you thrive. Or your divine connection. The gift of divine connections is priceless. Never take it for granted. Can you hear me this morning? Can you hear me this morning? Hallelujah. Can you hear me this morning? Remember your true identity stems from God. God is saying, the idea, I've given it to you already. You are the head and not the tail. You are above always and never beneath. You are already in my kingdom. You are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That is given. But the degree to which you thrive is the degree to which you search out your connection with me. So I am available. I have given you all things. It is the glory of, it's my glory to conceal a matter. It is your glory as a king to search it out. How much are you searching God in this season? How much are you searching for God in this season? How much are you asking questions of God in this season? How good is your functional relationship with God? When was the last time you heard God? Where was the last time you were instructed? Where was the last time you can say, I'm truly in the center of his will? Or you have become comfortable with certain standards, certain excuses, going with the norm, going with the trend. God is saying, I'm reaching out to you. I need you to reach out to me. Because I know the degree to which you search me and you are connected in me and you find yourself in me. is the degree to which you raise your hand as a king and you raise your head as a priest and you stand out amongst others. When others stood... In the house of David. And Samuel said, I will anoint this because he's the one. What did God say? I rejected him. Do you understand? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have rejected. They all had to wait for David to come. Because David was not only a true shepherd. He was connected to the, the shepherd himself. And David had his divine connection intact. The others were looking good in front of men. David said to it where it was most important. Hallelujah. So you need to consciously reflect God when you relate with others. Consciously. Because if your true identity is in God, then when you relate with your spouse, they should see Jesus. When you relate with your children, they should see what? When you relate with your colleagues, they should see what? Hallelujah. That you might decrease. That he might increase. Hallelujah. That the world might decrease. That the divinity in you might increase. Are you with me this morning? And God is saying, the more you search me, the more I show up, the more I show myself strong, the more I will blow your mind. My walk with God is not your walk. Your walk with God is unique, but God is waiting to walk with you. Nevertheless. So, God is saying, you thrive on your divine connection. You thrive on your connection with me. 
And guess what? As your shepherd, God has given you a surely. Can somebody get on the keyboard? As your shepherd, God has given you a surely. But Pastor D, I've been believing God to get married. I'm still your shepherd. I don't have a job yet. I'm still your shepherd. I don't understand what is happening in my country right now. I'm still your shepherd. Oh, this doctor's report is overwhelming and heartbreaking. I'm still your shepherd. I'm grieving over my father. I'm still your shepherd. I'm grieving over the baby that I lost. It's so crazy. It's so overwhelming. I'm still your shepherd. Remember, your thriving is in me. I'm your source. And as your shepherd, I carry you when you can all go on. So I need you to be able to declare that surely, goodness, surely, goodness, if it's not good, it's not God. If it's not God, it's not permitted. If it's not God, it can't stay in my life. My true identity is in God. My connection is in God. And God is the one I focus on. God is the one I hold on to. God is the one I trust in. God is the one I depend on. It cannot fail me. And the more I depend on him, the more I thrive. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter towards the perfect day. So it's not just about what I do. It's not just about what men say. It's about the fact that I have a God that never sleeps, he never slumbers, he never fails, his mercies are new every morning. So no matter what the season is, no matter what the challenge is, no matter what I'm up against, I keep singing of the goodness of God, I keep singing of the mercy of God, I keep singing of the deliverance of God, I keep singing of the mercies of God. It never fails. It never fails. I will, not, I will not lose sight. I will not lose sight. I will not lose sight. I might have the job right now. I might drive the car right now. But without the car, without the job, without the status, I know what my true source is. I thrive on my divine connection. And since he cannot fail, I'm secure in him. So we come full circle. Starting from remember God is your true identity. And he's reminding you again, remember, you thrive on your connection with me. And I'm not ready to fail you, but are you going to hold on to me? Are you going to trust me as your shepherd? And as you trust me, Psalm 23, you will lack nothing. I'll give you a personalized experience in every area of your life. There's nothing about some, a part of your life being good and one part not being good. No. Not in this season. Somebody say no. You lack nothing. Somebody say nothing. Somebody say nothing. Anything that has a name, as long as you need it, you lack nothing. It makes you to lie down in green pastures. God says you've been hustling and running elter skelter and speaking English. Rest in me. Rest in me. Ah, when you talk about green pastures for the sheep, you talk about abundance. Hallelujah. When you talk about still waters, that means that provision cannot drown the sheep. It can take its time and get refreshed to the fullest. God says, remember, that is the season I have brought you into. Where every effort you make is exponential result in the name of Jesus. Where there's divine multiplication in the name of Jesus. And men around you might be clueless. 
People in your industry might be clueless, but he guides you along the right path. For his name's sake, he just wants to feel cool that you are his son, that you are his daughter. And in this dispensation, he just wants to show off with you. And even though you walk through the darkest valley, even though storms come, I don't know how dark it is for anyone right now. You don't need to fear any evil. For he is with you. His rod and his staff is comforting you, is correcting you, is teaching you, is helping you. Can I still get on the stage? Hallelujah. His rod and his staff comfort you. And while you think all is going a wire, is preparing a table for you in the presence of your opposition in the presence of your enemies hallelujah is causing his goodness to run after you to envelop you to take charge of everything and he anoints your head but all your cup runs over this is the dispensation you are particular about your relationships. Any relationship that will not make your divine connection become stronger and louder and better, it's time for you to begin to cut off. Did you hear me? This is not the season where we give excuses. This is not the season where we play down on our instructions. This is not the season where we toy with things. This is the season where we go by the anointing of God and he overflows as we begin to exchange ideas, as we begin to worship, as we pray, as we fast, as we sow our seed, as we press, as we give in the name of Jesus. Your cup runs over, your cup runs over and the surely in your spirit, it wells up and it begins to speak in the name of Jesus. So even though there's darkness around you, even though there are challenges, even though there are things you need to surmount ahead of you, that you don't know how you're going to deal with it. Surely. Somebody say surely. God has, has given you a surely. God has given you a surely. God has given you a surely. It's goodness and love follows you. You don't have to run after it though. It comes after you. And God is saying look back and think for a moment. I brought you this far. I kept you all the way. And I'm about to take it to a whole new level. Are you going to trust me? Are you going to search for me? Are you going to stay with me? That I can take you into riches that you have never experienced before. Can you rise up on your feet?